Vince is the president now of two clubs, the Lake Shore Toastmasters and our club, until June, and then he's going to leave us. Uh, he's doing his fifth, fifth speech. His title is called Prison, Prison Break. So the timing is five minutes for green, six for yellow, red for seven. So let everybody let me welcome Vince Fair for Prison Break. Prison Break. Detaining criminals can be difficult. In 1934, the infamous Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary opened its doors, becoming home to the most violent criminals in America. The prison bristled with electric wires, fences, and bars, and gun towers. And it had hidden microphones designed to pick up the faintest ping of a tunnel under construction. Federal officials were convinced that it was escape proof. But on June 11, 1962, three resourceful men, after six months of digging, made their way to and wiggled their way through the concrete ventilation system and out to freedom. Madam Tate, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, Today I'd like to talk about breaking free from another kind of prison, the prison of mental depression. The World Health Organization recently released the findings of a study conducted at the Harvard School of Public Health, and they predict that by the year 2020, that depression will become the second leading cause of death worldwide. In the last 15 years, the number of North Americans seeking medical attention for depression has doubled. And currently, in any given year, 10% of the population will seek medical attention for depression. Uh, so what are the symptoms of depression? Depression can be characterized by feelings of worthlessness, the inability to concentrate, abnormal sleeping and eating patterns, the loss of interest in activities, and the general withdrawal from society. Obviously, for an illness as serious as depression, a person's first course of action should be to see, see their medical doctor. Currently, there is a wide range of medication available to treat biologically-based depression successfully. And there is medication available that can help a person cope with a situationally-based depression. But aside from the medical component of depression, I'd like to focus on the cognitive component of depression, the thinking part of depression. In simple terms, depression is a crisis of confidence. A person loses confidence in themselves and in their ability to meet the challenges of life. They develop a can't-do belief system. say, watch out for negative thinking, but negative thinking is just a symptom of a deeper problem, negative believing. You see, what you dwell on in your thinking is steered by your beliefs. If your beliefs are correct, your thinking will be on track automatically. But let your inner beliefs slip in any one of life's many aspects, and your mind and mood will follow. So it is your beliefs that determine whether you are a can-do person or a can't-do person. And you might say, with so many things that a person can believe, how does a person know what to believe in? And that's easy, because basically there's only two things that you can believe in, the truth and lies. When you believe in the truth, life is incredibly easy. When you believe in lies, you could wish life would end. But let's see how this plays out in one of life's most important aspects, in the area of making money. A person's inability to generate finances can cause all kinds of problems in their life. It can cause a marriage breakup, 
it can cause children being taken from their parents, it can cause teenage rebellion, it can cause drug abuse, alcohol abuse, and it can cause a person to choose a life of crime in order to generate the finances that they need. But as serious as, as poverty can be, and as plenteous as job opportunities can be out there, people that have that can't-do belief system find it impossible to find that job. Why is that? It's because of uh, their believing lies over the truth. What are some of the lies that the can't-do person believes? One of them is responsible for many people who are on a government disability pension. That is this. I, I could never have what it takes to be gainfully employed. Think about that. That lie is responsible for many people who just are incapable of going and getting work. And another lie is is for people who are focused, who are too focused on the past, who keep running into objects in their present. And that's, I'm thinking of people that uh, have this line that says, I'll never progress past the level of success I now have or did have. Then there's a third lie that says, that is responsible for much unhappiness. And that is, in fact, there are Surveys have been done, 70% of the people who are working believe this lie. It says, I could never be happy in my job. These three lies are responsible for uh, a dr dramatic, uh, a large loss in income and in happiness. So then what does the can-do person believe? The can-do person says, I'm smart, I'm friendly, I'm I'm diligent, I'm dependable, and I'm happy. And when you develop those kind of characteristics into your, into your character and your psyche, then getting that job will, be, will come your way without a problem. But how do we get to that place where those characteristics are part of us? You start by your words. Because just like a, a large ship is steered by a rudder, so it is your words are steered your words can steer your life. And so even though you don't feel like you're what those characteristics are, you begin to say them out loud. And slowly situations will come your way, people, information will come your way, and you'll become what those characteristics are. But aside from that, um, disarming <coughs> the lies associated with, with generating <coughs> income is only one facet of our beliefs that needs to be correct if we're going to be happy. And happiness is so attainable. And so much is riding on our happiness. Do you know what can happen when a person is, uh, is allowed to be unhappy for too long? The unhappiness spreads to others. How is that? When we allow a person to become so depressed that they take their own lives, then the friends and loved ones of that person are left with a huge hole in their hearts. So don't wait until depression suicide becomes the second leading cause of death worldwide. Obtain the knowledge of how to be happy today and pass that knowledge on to someone who needs it. By doing this, you will become part of the greatest prison break ever, the breaking free from the prison of depression.